Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, ASC Praise, and you're watching Praise TV, the place where we discuss all things Protoss as it relates to my favorite game, StarCraft II. This new series, which I have called The Forgotten Spells, will dive deep into the abyss of understanding, where we will pick one of the special units in the Protoss arsenal to discuss. We will be breaking down where we are in the meta, as well as bring to your attention many of the considerations when it comes to this unit's strength in StarCraft II. Do you use your units well? Are you maximizing their potential and getting consistent, insightful, and groundbreaking results in your gameplay? Or are you approaching certain units all wrong? Though StarCraft II has been out for quite some time, there is still much to be innovated in the creative use of Legacy of the Void's latest units and old favorites alike. This episode, we will be doing a two-part series which highlights the Oracle and talks about all of the research I have compiled about this unit to drive home the reality that there is so much more potential than we give credit for with our precious units. In part one of our episode today, we will be looking into two sections in particular. One, we need to revisit talking about the spells that the Oracle has and what they actually do. Once we've laid that foundation down very briefly, I'll then go ahead and highlight the uses of the Oracle in each of the three matchups. So to start off with the spells of the Oracle, we have our first spell, Revelation, which causes enemy units and structures within a target area to grant vision for 60 seconds. It also reveals cloaked or burrowed units and structures, and this spell costs 50 energy. The next spell is Stasis Ward, which places a cloaked Stasis Ward at a target spot. Once activated by an enemy ground unit, the ward traps them in Stasis for 21 seconds. Trapped units cannot be attacked or affected by the abilities, and this spell costs 50 energy to use. The last and final spell is Pulsar Beam, which causes 15 or plus 10 versus light units spell damage to ground units while active. This spell costs 50 energy to use and will remain on until the unit runs out of energy or the spell is deactivated. The next topic that we'll go into is the Oracle's highlight matchup uses. Starting with Protoss vs. Zerg, the Oracle is most known for its early game harass, assistance to early adept pressure and or timings, killing queens in a one-on-one -on -one fight, that's provided that there are no spore crawlers or additional queens or anti-air uh, on the battlefield. They're also known for helping to secure third bases. This is where an oracle will stay at home as opposed to attack in order to defend and create a safe and secure place to plant the third without it being sniped. Also, the oracle is the quickest form of scouting when compared to the observer and most of the other units uh, with the exception of Phoenix. It's also the most optimal detection versus lurkers, late game air units, and harass groups. It's also very good at freezing attack paths. The stasis ward not only grants vision where it is planted, but it also freezes harass group units and allows you the time to either make your static defense, return home, or handle the situation with the appropriate time without suffering the consequences of being caught off guard. The Oracle is also good at delaying expansions. Now, if you have one or more Oracles and you catch an expansion that's thrown down immediately, oftentimes you can cancel the expansion, but in my opinion, the most optimal way to delay an expansion is always by killing the worker with a quick pulsar beam. This allows you to keep much needed energy for later spell use, and also is just quite simply the most easiest way to delay time without having to uh, control the unit or make sure that it doesn't get picked off. And lastly, the Oracle is good with its revelation ability uh, and allows you to discourage your opponent army moveouts and harass. When you're casting revelation on your opponent and they know that you know where they are and what kind of tech they have and different things like this or where they might be harassing, they're much less likely to continue with the task that you see them uh, doing. They're more than likely uh, going to change up their gameplay or add an extra few steps into their macro or micro that they wouldn't have considered if they weren't being revealed. The next matchup that we're going to be talking about is Protoss versus Protoss. 
In this matchup, the Oracle is good for a few less reasons than PVT and PVZ, but nonetheless, these reasons are just as critical to this matchup. So the Oracle first and foremost provides a defensive stasis ward, which allows you to, while teching, hold off any very quick attacks or rushes to kill your expansion if you are doing a Stargate-based opener. This is extremely valuable. The defensive stasis ward also works very well against things like blink stalkers or weird blink openings. Uh, planting stasis wards in the main or in the natural can definitely be a hindering blow uh, to your opponent if they're doing any rush builds. Also, the unit's strength lies in its early and mid-game uh, worker harass. The Oracle's also good at using Revelation to monitor tech, army positioning, as well as invisible units like Dark Templar. Its stasis ward uh, slows down enemy expansions as well. Again, as I said in the PvZ matchup, the most efficient way to stop an expansion, in my opinion, is by killing the worker, not necessarily wasting all of your energy um, on a, an attempted build of an expansion, but nonetheless, it can be done both ways uh, and should be prioritized accordingly. The Oracle is also very good at assisting small army skirmishes. In Protoss vs. Protoss, we have a lot of adept or stalker scouting slash pressure in the early game. And if you have an Oracle opening that is not doing so well because the Mothership Core is very uh, is in a very safe position, you can always assist your early army moveouts and do critical damage elsewhere to avoid the Mothership Core and the pylon overcharge accordingly. The Oracle also keeps track of special units such as Harass Blink Stalkers, Disruptors, Tempests, and Phoenixes. And lastly, the Revelation ability discourages enemy army moveouts. Again, like in PvZ, if your opponent can see that you know that he is attempting to move out, he is less likely to do so. This also works with tech. If, you're, if you have the ability to scout your opponent's tech, uh, there may be some strange instances where, because they can see that you know what they're doing, they might switch tech paths. The next matchup that we're going to talk about is the Protoss versus Terran matchup. The Oracle has many uses in this matchup, um, first being that it has early and mid-game harass potential. Uh, this is even the case for if turrets get thrown down eventually, you still have the ability to kill transferring workers or at an angle attack the outer parts of a mineral line. The Oracle's Revelation ability allows you to see the main army, drops, banshees, as well as widow mines. 111 openings are very popular in Protoss versus Terran, and oftentimes detection can be a game winner for you if you do it well. The Oracle also is good at delaying expansions with the Stasis Ward. Again, you can also kill the worker in this matchup before they build the base, but oftentimes if you have other tasks to accomplish such as scouting or worker harass, the Stasis Ward allows you uh, or guarantees you the fact that the expansion will be delayed while you can take care of other tasks. One Oracle can kill five Marines, just a heads up, in a straight up fight. A lot of times, pro uh, Terran players will spread their Marines out so you can kind of get tag-along kills and stretch it for much more. But in a straight-up engagement, one Oracle will kill five Marines comfortably. Um, but note that two Oracles can only kill eight Marines in a straight-up fight. So the more Marines uh, get accumulated, the less that an Oracle versus Marine fight is logical. But in the early game, you can do very critical damage. The Oracle can also assist Pylon Overcharge in Harass Cleanup. This includes Drops, Widow Mines, and Hit Squads. It's very good at assisting the Overcharge and creating uh, or dealing that heavy damage that you need uh, in the event that you don't have a warp in and are waiting for the warp gate cooldown. Um, it also uses the Revelation, which will discourage enemy army moveouts. That's the one unifying... Uh, highlight in all three of the matchups that anytime you're revealing things, it discourages your enemy from doing any kind of weird tech switches or even moving out and posturing or harassing. Lastly, the Oracle can do game ending damage in the early game if you are very successful with your early first and second Oracle. Uh, you can then just keep them alive, and if you do a lot of damages either to the mineral line or to the uh, 
Marine Count, you can often follow it up with a gateway attack that is ex extremely powerful. So guys, that wraps up part one of our video where we discuss the spells and highlight uses in the matchup, and this is where it starts to get fun. Part two of my video will talk about the tactics, flight, and efficiency of the Oracle, and I will be showing you guys a map and how to plot out the best ways to use the Oracle when approaching your matchups. Then we'll dive into my extreme casting opportunities where I talk about what I believe is the best way to use an Oracle if it has full energy, half energy, or not a lot of energy. And then we'll wrap up by bringing up some of the other considerations that I've found that might be helpful in giving you a more well-rounded perspective perspective on the Oracle. If you guys like my videos, feel free to share and comment and critique it all you want. Again, this is for my in-depth nerds that love hearing things. Again, it's my opinion on a lot of things, but I have done a lot of research and done my best to bring you guys quality as well as pictures to bring it all home and to make it easier for you guys to digest. Again, I'm your host, ASC Praise, and you're watching Praise TV, the place where we discuss all things Protoss. Peace.